My name is Siri Vivas, and in this video, I'll be presenting how I turned my facial mist into a bulul. So for those who don't know or haven't heard of this, this is a carved wooden figure used to guard the rice crop by the Ifugao peoples of northern Luzon. Now for my project, I designed my chosen item by means of sculpture. I started by getting what I needed and luckily the only material I needed was an air dry clay. So I got that. Then before I did some sculpting, I first sketched my plan for the design. Now it was time to do some sculpting. Starting with the body of the bulul, I began by applying some clay onto the side and kind of just like spread it all over, leaving the cover as I'll be using that to create the head part later. Now that I'm done with the body part, it's time to move on with the head. And I was able to form the face right. So while I create the other parts of the sculpture, let's talk a little bit about bulul. Just as I mentioned, it originated in Ifugao and is important to Ifugaos because they believe they can protect and multiply the rice and then also help make the harvest abundant, which is why it symbolizes the Ifugao guardian or god of rice harvest. My name is Reina Edna P. Cruz and I'm in grade 12 wisdom. Today, I'll be making a manungul jar and as we go along, you'll learn about its history. So, let's get started! The materials required to make a manungul jar are shown on the screen. To begin, we'll need used paper. In my instance, I'll be recycling a module from the previous school year. Next, we'll need the balloon which will serve as the jar's shape creator. We'll also need glue to hold everything together, as well as a brush and paint to decorate our jar. Here's a time-lapse of me making Manungo jar. But wait, what was a Manungo jar? The Manungo jar is a secondary burial excavated from a Neolithic burial site in Manungo Cave of the Tabon Caves in the Puun Point in Palawan. By a team of volunteer workers from the United States Peace Corps headed by Victor de Calan and Hans Kasten. It dates from 890 to 710 BC. It has an incised running scroll and impressed decorations painted with hematite. The two proponent figures at the top handle of its cover represents the journey of the soul to the afterlife. Early Filipinos believe that a man is composed of a body, a life force called ginhawa, and a kaluluwa. This explains why the design of the cover of the manungul jar features three faces, the soul, the boatman, and the boat itself. I hope to see you all again soon. Bye! I would be transforming this plastic cup into this kalinga jar. And I would be using this plastic cup that I always use for drinking my water. And I would be taking off the lid so it could be reused again. I am using a white paint as my base color for this project. And the reason why I am putting white paint on the plastic cup is because for the brown paint that I would be using next would be vibrant. So now I am waiting for it to dry. After it has been dried, I have already premixed a brown paint. I am painting it horizontally so that I could at least achieve the clay texture that the jar has. Also, did you know that the Kalinga jar existed from early to mid 20th century? So after it has been dried, I am taking a white paint and I will be painting the motifs that are in my reference picture. A small fun fact about Kalinga jars, Kalinga is a province that is located in the Philippines' Cordillera Mountains 
this pottery art has a few distinctive features, one of which is its unique geometric motifs. And these unique geometric motifs are patterns symbolic of tribal designs taken from nature. Kalinga ceramic jars are often used as storage containers, cooking rice, cooking meat, or vegetables, and collecting or storing water. So as you notice, I am using a broken line in order to replicate on what is on my reference picture. So I waited for it to dry again and I am using this clear acrylic sealing spray. And the reason why I am using this spray is because it is to prevent the paint from being washed away by water. So this is the finished product after the sealing spray has been dry. Hi, I'm Isaiah Vanje El Aranya from Grade 12 Wisdom. I hope that everyone are safe and healthy at this very moment. And for my performance task in contemporary Philippine arts from the region, my chosen object to redesign is face mask. Of all, here are the materials that I need to use to create my art. First, is the poster paint. Next is the designing materials. Next, the ruler. Next, the paper cups and the sticks that are used to mix coffees and a glue gun, paint brushes, pencil, and most importantly, the main material that I need is a face mask. So, what are we waiting for? Let's start! So, the first thing that you need to do is to measure the face mask and cut the paper cups that will match the measurement of the face mask. This last step is just an additional design to make the face mask unique. So you will just glue the red sticks to the edge of the face mask to make it more unique and presentable. All done, let us take a glimpse of the finished Learn something from me. Thank you and be safe to you all. Hi, I'm Shane Kirsten Espanolosa from Great 12 Wisdom. And today, the ethnic design that I chose to remake is the Bulul or also known as Tinagtago. Here are some of the materials that I will be using to make the Bulul. I will be using this cardboard as a base and basket. These popsicle sticks will serve as the skeleton of the body. And I will use this glue gun to stick the cardboard and popsicle sticks together. First, I will start by making the base. I'm going to cut out a rectangular shaped cardboard and attach popsicle sticks in between to strengthen the stability of the base. And this is a wax ball, and I will be using this as the head of the body. And I will be using this used paper as the cover or skin of the whole structure. And some glue to stick the papers together. I started out by ripping small pieces of the paper, and then I will glue the paper onto the wax ball. 
and I will use this blower to fasten the drying process. Now I'm going to use this glue gun to highlight out some details of the body. And as you can see here, I'm using the glue gun to shape the head. Now I'm going to use the popsicle stick to serve as a stand of the head. Then I'm going to stick the head onto the base. Here I use some crumpled papers and broken popsicle sticks to form the other body parts. And then I just used a glue gun to attach all of the paper and popsicle sticks onto the body. Here, I'm going to shape out some parts of the body by using the head of the glue gun. And here, I proceeded uncovering the whole structure with paper and glue. And after letting it dry for a few minutes, now I'm starting to cover some parts of the body using glue gun. Now after letting it fully dry, now I'm proceeding into painting the whole structure. I will only use the black and brown color. After letting the paint dry, now I'm gonna finish it by polishing. And before we finish up, let's talk about what is bulul. Bulul, or also known as tinagtago, is a carved wooden figure. And it is used to guard the rice crop by the Ifugao peoples of northern Luzon. It is the most numerous and best known of Ipugao figurative sculptures. And it usually takes the form of either a standing or seated figure. And it is a sacred figure that is represented as protective gods of barns and harvest and guardians of rice. And it is one of the fundamental nourishments of the area. Now, this is the final product. That's it! You reached the end of the video! And I just want to say thank you for watching and I hope you like what I did. Bye! Hi everyone! Here are the materials that we are going to use for today. First, we have our trash can. Next, our styro, used cartolina, a glue gun, some glue sticks, we also have our glue, cutter, marker, cups, paintbrush, and of course, our paint. First, we have to get the trash can, but make sure to clean it before you use it. Then put some glue on it and paste the cartolina or newspaper all over it. The Manunggul Jar is a secondary burial jar excavated from a Neolithic burial site in the Manunggul Cave of the Tabon Caves at Lipuan Point in Palawan, Philippines. It dates from 890 to 710 BC and the two prominent figures at the top handle of its cover represent the journey of the soul to the afterlife. After covering our trash can with papers, let's now proceed to the cover of the trash can that will serve as our handle later on. First, we have to get the styro and cutter then follow this design after covering the trash can with some papers we can now put some colors using our paint here i mix the white paint with the black one to form gray that will serve as the base color of our handle 
I mixed black, white, and brown paint to color the trash can. Using the glue gun, put the handle on the top part of the jar or on the lid. So here is our final product! I hope you learned a lot today and at the same time had fun! Stay safe and God bless everyone! Bye! My name is Tesar P. Badana from 12 Stem Wisdom and here is my ethnic art name Bulul as for my speaker's holder. Now let's proceed with some of the materials that we need. Two containers, clays, glues, tissues, paint, paintbrush, and as well as surgical gloves. Now I start with mixing two available clays that I have at home. I only have green and blue, but mostly green. In here, I'm mixing water and glue together as for my paste. Then I started with creating the base of the head, then the hands. Once I was done with the hands, I proceeded with the body of the bulul. Next, I'm combining the upper part and lower part of the body of the bulul. It's the second day of creating my version of Bulul. For now, let's discuss what is Bulul. According to Wikipedia, Bulul, also known as Bulul or Tinagtago, is a carved wooden figure used to guard the rice crop by the Ifugao and their sub-tribe Kalanguya, peoples of northern Luzon. Let's proceed with the part 2 of the facts about Bulul. Bulul's are used in ceremonies associated with rice production and with healing. The creation of a bulul involves all when bulul ritual by a priest to ensure that the statue gains power. It's the third day! In here, I'm molding and carving the clay for the details of the bulul, such as the hands, the feet, the ears, and especially the face. <laughs> Now it's the fourth day! Now I'm doing spray painting! It's the last day! I'm double coating and retouching the balloon. So now I'm presenting to you the final result of my paper mache version of balloon. Thank you for watching and have a nice day! Goodbye!